that's another thing that I like to do is pull in Common Core and where do these math topics fit into Common Core. So third grade Common Core, they have to be able to compare unit fractions and most teachers say, what is a unit fraction? And I have to say, I'm guilty of that when I first saw the word unit fractions because I'm like, what's a unit fraction? How is that different? Unit fractions are exactly what they sound like. They have one as the numerator. So we have to be able to compare. We're just talking about one unit. So you have in front of you three strips of white paper. And what's one thing you notice about your three strips of white paper? They're identical. They are the same size. They are equal in size. So we could even pull in the word congruent, that our three strips of white paper should be congruent because they are the same size and the same shape. So we know that they are the same size because we're comparing them. We know that our whole has to be the same whenever we're comparing fractions. So we have the same size. So the first strip of paper, we are going to fold it into two equal parts. And I'm a very hands-on person. That's why you'll see lots of hands-on activities because I, I have to do it when I learn it. So when you open it up, what do you notice about what you see? Those parts are the same. Yeah, two, two equal, equal parts. We have two equal parts. So what I want you to do on one of your parts is to write one half. Because we're talking about one of those two equal parts. Okay, with your second piece of paper, we're going to take this one. We'll, go, we'll do the easy way first. We're going to fold it in half. In our room, we have to practice getting corners to touch. <laughs> That's very important. <coughs> Wait till we do thirds. And now we're going to, since we're in half, we're going to fold it in half again, but I want you to make a prediction. Before you open it up, how many equal parts do you think you're going to have? Four. Why? Two times two is four. Right. Okay. And, and I, my kids know that that is the number one question that comes out of my mouth. I say, I beginning of the year, I tell them, I'm going to be like your annoying two-year-old little sister, and I'm going to say to you, why, all the time. Why do you think, you can't just tell me four, why do you think there's going to be four equal parts? And I get all kinds of answers. But mo most of my kids at this point will tell me, because we had two, we folded it again, or we should have four parts. Two times two is four. So if we open this up, we see that we do have, and what do you notice about your four parts? Equal. equal. They're equal. What do you notice about those four parts compared to your, over here when we had two parts? Oh, they're they're smaller. smaller. They are smaller. So in one of your parts over here, I want you to put one fourth. And I'll ask my kids why, why do you think these are smaller than these? And they'll say, because we folded them more. <laughs> and it's, it's cute, some of the answers that they'll say. Okay, with your third piece of paper, now we're going to fold into thirds, which is always a fun one to do. And so I tell them that we're going to do it, like a pair of binoculars, and we're going to try to line it up the best that we can before we smush it down. And if we're folding it into thirds, how many equal parts should we have? Three. Three. I'm smushing it, yes. <laughs> and then when you open it up, one of your parts we're going to label one third. And so now, all we're going to do at this point is just look at one half compared to one third compared to one fourth. And I would have them tell me different things that they would see. What's something you see with your one half, one third, one fourth? Half is more. Half is more. One quarter is the smallest. One fourth is the smallest. And I like that you said one quarter. And I, we do a lot of talk in my room about one quarter. Why do we say quarters? And we go back to money. Money is the biggest connection I can make with them for fractions and, and um, especially decimals. So, and it's great to, when we have to put one fourth as a decimal. What's another way to say one fourth, one quarter? What's a quarter of a dollar? Except what's hard now is that everybody's doing everything on, they don't play, use quarters to go play video games anymore. <laughs> you know, so, you know, a few years ago I could say, you know, your quarters, how many quarters did you get when you were at Frickers or wherever to go play video games? And they would be like, oh, and they, but now it's like, well, when you get three quarters from your parents, well, I don't get quarters from my parents. <laughs> so that's, this, this take, it's not helping. Um, so anything else that, so then I would have them line them up from least to greatest. 
So looking at your strips of paper, put them in order from the smallest to the largest. And which fraction is the smallest? Order four. Order one fourth. Which one's in the middle? Third. One third. And which one is the greatest? One half. one half. And so we start to see it. So again, here, most kids, when you ask them at the beginning which fraction would be larger, they would say one fourth because they see that four in, on the denominator and they think that fourths should be larger than halves, that halves would be smaller. So this just gives them a nice visual to see the difference between the three. Um, and then we do other things with these. I have my kids glue these into their math journals and so then later on we'll come back to these and we'll label fourths all the way across, we'll label thirds all the way across and then we can compare and then they can see that two fourths and one half are the same and they can compare it to two thirds and three thirds. Um, so they, I have them, we put glue on the back of one section, glue it into our math journal so that we can open these up and take those with us. So that's one activity on unit fractions. So what's the youngest grade level you would do this activity with? Um, third grade definitely would do this. I could see where you could probably start introducing it maybe in second grade. Okay. But you, like I said, unit fractions do come up in Common Core third grade. I believe second grade, they're fractions. I, you might know, I, it's, I it is, it's it's like, and it's looking at the shapes. Language. Yeah, language okay. and shapes. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at a circle, what's half of a circle. They're looking at it that way. This would not be hard for second graders to do. I could see where very easily this could be pulled into a geometry unit because you're still talking, you know, you're using rectangles here to do this. So when you're pulling in that language, in the, in the geometry unit, they could do something like this. Again, to introduce it and then go with it further in third grade. Um, so adding like denominators. With this, I always show my fraction garden that we do. This actually came from Catherine Coombs. Uh, that's where I get a lot of my activities that I do. <laughs> I love her number wonders book. Even though it says K2, it is perfect for three, four, five. I was telling Noelle last night that that is a hot seller and it's, you can't get it anymore. <laughs> and it's, uh, somebody went on Amazon to look for it and it was like $600 on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, so, we got a couple here we can sell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's a big one. A lot of people want that book. Um, no, so this, our, my homework this night was they had to make a flower. So of course there were 500 questions about what should my flower look like, how big should it be. I said just take home construction paper, make me a flower. So the next day we put together our fraction full garden. And here I made one huge mistake. Does anybody see what my mistake was? 23. I did. I should have made a flower and I did yeah. not realize it until we had already been halfway through the lesson. That was, I should have done, made it so we had 24 flowers. So what we did was we went back to our picture and they had to pull out different, whatever they wanted to look at to add together. So the first, our example was red flowers and blue flowers. So 14 20 thirds of our, gap, our garden were either red or blue flowers. And so then each of them came up and they put their fraction that they made based on what they wanted to find out. And had I had that 24th flower, we could have reduced some of these fractions down. So this year I learned from that mistake. This year, um, this was last year's, and last year we started school later. Because we started school so early this year, I, got, I was at this unit in February right around time for Valentine's Day. So this year we did a big heart. And so they had to make hearts for their homework. And they could take home whatever color they wanted, pink, purple, white, blue, whatever. And so on the big heart, we had their different hearts that we compared. And I had 22 students this year. So it worked a little bit better. We had some, you know, we could reduce those down. You know, I like the fact that this is what you share with your audience. So yes. You shared your mistake. Mm -hmm. that you uh, oh, yes. And, and yeah. asked, you know, why, why would you do it differently or what mm -hmm. might I have? What was going to be the problem? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I didn't realize it until we got part. I'm like, this is really silly. I could have had mm. one more and we could have gone a lot further with it. But like I said, I learned. <laughs> this year I was looking out for that and, and it did come out that we had 22. Um, adding and subtracting like fractions. So again, when I do the, the fractions, I try to pull in the model drawing where it belongs. So model drawing obviously would fit very well with that. So Taylor bought a bottle of juice at the store. She drank a third of it at breakfast and another third of it at lunch. What fraction of the juice was left? 
And so with that, we would work through the different steps to model drawing. Because I've gone off on other tangents and I know I'm running late on time, I'm gonna skip, is that okay if I skip doing this problem and we'll move on. But we would work through that as a model drawing problem. Um, okay, equivalent fractions. So once we have unit fractions, once we add fractions with like denominators, we get into equivalent fraction. So we're gonna take, okay, I'm gonna do this differently than what my directions were. You have a larger rectangle. Not your two, you have two congruent squares and then you have a larger rectangle. So with your rectangle, we're gonna start by folding it into fourths. So at this point now, they should know how to fold into fourths and we're going to fold into fourths horizontally. No, vertically, sorry, vertically. Yeah. Going horizontally. If you don't say that, will some of them fold it the other way? Mm -hmm. Have you know one horizontal, one vertical? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we spend a lot of time working on horizontal and vertical. But yes, I did. And even if I give the direction, I still have students who fold it mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I don't want them to do it for this is because I want them to see the one fourth. I want them to see it this way first. You'll see mm -hmm. why. Yeah. So with this, so, and then I have them tell me, now how are we folding it into fourths? What are we doing first? We're folding it into half. We're folding it again so that we now have fourths. And then when we open this up, oh, you know what? I'm going to pass these out. If you will just share these. I have crayons for you to share. Yeah, just take a couple and pass them down. If you will color one fourth of your strip, just color in one fourth. Does it matter which fourth? It, nope, it doesn't. I'm so glad you asked that. It does not matter which fourth, and I always color one of the middle ones because they always color the first one, and that's we talk about that. Mine's gonna go last. One fourth. Again, like Lorraine said, I always color one of the middle ones so that they can see one fourth does not always have to be the first one over here. But we'll go back and fold your paper back into your fourth, into your four equal sections, and this time now we are going to fold it in half this way and I want you to predict how many sections are we going to have when we open it up. Why? <laughs> and when you open it up, what do you notice? When you open it up and you go back, what do you now notice? Two colored sections. We now have two sections that were colored, but before we folded it, we only had one section that was colored and this is a huge eye-opener, huge, especially for my special, I know I keep making the connection back to special ed, but as I said last night, Singapore math, special ed, they go hand in hand perfectly. But it, in their eyes, get huge when they see this. Oh my goodness, I went, it, because a lot of my higher ability students, they already know what they're going to see. So the, it's the lower ones that, I, that really hit this hits home for. So now we can see why one fourth is the same as two eighths. We can make that connection right here. So this is great, we can do it with thirds and six, we could do it with fourths and eight, we could fold it again, and I do, um, I don't usually use construction paper with my students when I do this so that we can fold it multiple times, but if we went back and we folded it again, and I will have them fold them several times, so then, they, then they'd have to predict how many are we gonna have now, 16, we would open it up, and now then they can see, if I could fold this stronger, construction paper is hard for that but then they can start to make that list of equivalent fractions that they see from doing this activity. So again, just a different way. And I frequently I'll get the question, well, can't we just use the fraction strips to do it? Well, yes, you can use the fraction strips and the fraction circles. This is just another way to show the same thing. 